one of my favorite meals that my wife makes is beef stew in the crock pot. Now, back when she first started making it, I would request her to make beef stew at least twice a month. I, I loved it. It tastes great. I just love that, that warmth that it gives, especially on a cold day. And I just really loved it when she made beef stew. But you know what happened, guys? The more I had her make it, um, the more I started to not want it every month. And slowly I began to fall away from that first love and passion I had for beef stew. And uh, now we're making it maybe once a month, but she asked me last night, what do you want for, for dinner tonight? I can either do this, this, or beef stew, and I'll pick something other than beef stew. So I kind of lost my passion for the beef stew. And I know that may seem like a silly illustration, but it is a perfect illustration for what can happen to us with our relationship with Jesus. When we become a believer in Jesus, that, that first day, that first month, uh, that, that first couple of years, we're just like on fire. We're just like so in love with Jesus. We're fervently serving him. We're going to church regularly. Man, we're telling people about Jesus. We're just so happy and just you know, just ready to share that with, with everyone else. But guys, sometimes that love that we had at the very beginning, it begins to dim. It, it begins to fizzle out, much like a campfire that's left by itself. And what does the Bible say? We're going to be looking at two, two scriptures here from the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, chapters 2 and 3, the Apostle John records to us seven letters that Jesus had him send to seven churches in Asia Minor. This would be modern-day Turkey. And in one of those letters, he writes to the church at Ephesus. And in that church, uh, in that letter to the church, Jesus recognizes that he knew their work, it says, that they patiently endured all the things that came at them. They endured it. And he knew that they did not tolerate evil. And those are great characteristics. And, and understand, Jesus knows your work. He sees the good things, and he sees the not-so-good things in your life. And he saw some not-so-good things in the church of Ephesus, and this is what he says to them in verse 4. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned, or the King James says you left, your first love, or ESD says, abandoned the love you had at first. And then it gives them the, the way to fix it. Remember, therefore, from where you had fallen, repent, do the works you did at first. If not, I will come and remove your land stamp from this place unless you repent. So when he says that they left their first love, they abandoned the love they had for them at first, they're, when they first heard about Jesus, they turned from their sin and they began to follow Jesus. But it doesn't say what happened here, but somehow through the months and through the years, that love and that passion began to fizzle out a little bit. Their fire began to dim. And it doesn't say why it happened. And I came up with some things. Maybe these things here uh, are some of the reasons why we may, uh, our fire may diminish. And maybe it's because you're not reading the word like you were. You're not praying like you used to. Um, this pandemic, when we're not able to meet with our brothers and sisters face to face, and that can really cause our fire to go out because when we meet together, we fellowship together, we are encouraging one another. Even the morning motivation can be a way to encourage other believers and to, to ignite our fire 
and, and to stoke our fire. Maybe you let some sin creep into your life and, and you let some things go in your life that you need to, to work on fixing that can diminish your fire. And, and maybe you're going through a really hard trial in your life. Maybe you got some questions for God. You, you don't know why he's letting things happen in your life. And the trials you go through can, can sometimes diminish your fire and can move you from that first love that you had to Jesus and that passion that you used to have. Maybe I'm talking to somebody this morning that, that you're not as on fire as you used to be. You used to love God so much more than you do now. I'm not saying you don't love him, but there was a time in your life when, when you used to be really on fire for Jesus. So what's the answer? The answer is three things, and Warren, Warren Wiersbe in his commentary breaks these up out of three R's. He says you need to remember, repent, and redo. So basically, you need to remember how you used to be in relationship with Jesus. Maybe you're still as on fire as you used to be, and praise the Lord if you are. You keep you keep burning that fire, and you keep showing all those that that their fire is gone out. You use some of your fire to relight their fire. But if you feel that your fire is burning out, remember the time in your life when you were the most on fire and fervent for Jesus. Remember that, and evaluate your life and say, "Have I fallen from that?" Number two. Repent, that means to change your mind, and it leads to a change of heart, and it will lead to a change of life. Do a U-turn. Go back to that time in your life when you were on fire, which leads us to number three, redo. Go back and start doing those things that you did when you first became a Christian. Uh, when I first became a Christian, I started reading through the passages the, the pages of the scriptures. Um, I was never really a fervent reader until I became a follower of Jesus and I began to read and read and read and read. Worship music was really my heartbeat. And our church had a, a campaign to where we were trying to knock on every door uh, surrounding our church. So they had different clipboards to different neighborhoods. So I'd pick up a clipboard and I'd go out there all by myself. Uh, I'd try to drive my wheelchair while I'm trying to hold the clipboard. And I wanted to tell people about Jesus, not just to fill the clipboard up, but I, I wanted to really tell people about Jesus. I was on fire for Jesus. People knew it. But sometimes that fire begins to diminish, guys. So my motivation for you today is I want to encourage you uh, to take the poker out just like when you have a, a fire. When you have a fire going, you have a fire going. Sometimes when you have a fire going, that fire will begin to go out. There it is on the screen, guys. And sometimes you have to take a poker and you have to poke that fire. You have to stoke the fire. Move the logs around in there so that the fire can get oxygen. And I even saw one uh, piece of equipment where you could actually blow into the fire as you're stoking the fire. So if you find today that your love to Jesus is not as strong as it used to be, I want to encourage you today, don't settle for less in your life. I want to encourage you to get the poker and start moving the wood around in there and start poking the fire so that you can be back on fire uh, for the Lord. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for my motivation family. Thank you, Lord, for this word. I pray you'd help them to, not just them, help me, help us to stoke the fire so that we can go back to that love that we once had for you, that passion, that, that fire we had. May we rekindle that fire today. In Jesus' name, amen.